joining and uh, thank you for everybody sort of around the world on this. We have a lot of people from Italy, people from the United States. Um, there's a lot of interest in Italy at the moment. So perhaps, you know, a, a good thing to do is uh, to start out by, um, you know, Pietro is there in Florence. Um, Pietro, perhaps you can talk a little bit about yourself and then, you know, perhaps we can have the other panelists just introduce who they are very briefly. Yes, okay, thank you, Mark, uh, for the introduction. My name is Pietro Pennisi. Um, I work uh, with um, um, Davis and Associate for the past uh, uh, one and a half year. Uh, I'm a lawyer based in Florence, Italy. Um, I, uh, I have assisted for the past 20 years, uh, mainly US um, and uh, uh, English uh, clients uh, relocating in Italy. So uh, my uh, expertise is uh, uh, to assist uh, individuals and company to uh, relocate in Italy in terms of uh, migration, uh, purchase of properties, um, providing some tax uh, advice uh, with regards to those who want to uh, relocate in Italy. Uh, and mainly that's it. Okay, great. Um, Valeria? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Valeria Sorce, I am from Musumeli. Um, I work now for three years in a real estate agency and we main manage the, um, the project of the municipality, the one year house. Uh, since I started to work in this project, we already sell more than 100 uh, houses to foreigners. Uh, they come from all over the world, uh, US, China, UK, um, Brazil, really from Australia, uh, we are a lot of uh, countries and we hope we can still have more people uh, coming to buy property here. Great, okay, Nicolo, how are you today, sir? Thank you, Mark, I'm very good today. Great day here in Parma and Hello everyone, all the, all the participants. I'm Nicola Bola, founder of Accounting Bola. I'm an Italian tax expat. I basically help um, expats living in Italy managing their taxes. I've, I'm author of two eBooks you can find on Amazon on how to buy property in Italy and how to deal with Italian taxes. Somebody's got two microphones on. That's what that noise means. <laughs> yeah, I'm by myself here, so everybody left the office. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay, all right. And then um, who's next? Meredith? Hello, my name is Meredith Tabone. Uh, I am, uh, actually live in Chicago. I I'm a financial advisor and I am also one of the 16 people that um, won the auction for a one-year-old home in Sambuca. So I am now in the middle of uh, the renovation of that property. And, uh, I'm just here really to answer any questions that people have that are interested in this, um, if, that want to know what it's really like to do this. So um, hello everyone and uh, looking forward to hearing from everyone. Okay, Giuseppe. Hello, Giuseppe. Um, Giuseppe, are you on mute? Giuseppe, I think you're on mute. Let's go to Alessandro while Giuseppe figures out his mute button. So hi to everybody. My name is Alessandro Barba. I've been an expat myself in Europe, South America, Poland, Belgium, Brazil, Netherlands. And like since one year, I started together with Nicola a new project to start called the Retire to Italy. And so we help uh, foreigners to buy houses in Italy, relocate here. We, get, we provide assistance with many different services. And lately I've been involved in uh, uh, with my clients for one euro homes. So if you have any questions about the experience, uh, how it feels like to live in South Italy, we are happy to, to, to answer you. 
Okay, Giuseppe. Now I think you'll mute yourself. <laughs> Uh, hello everybody, I, I talk to Sambuca in this time um, as the vice mayor in the municipality. Um, last year uh, start a big project about one year house in Sambuca and a uh, uh, big project, big uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful people arrive this time. Meredith is the uh, woman uh, arrived in Sambuca and buy a house in Sambuca. Uh, I hope next time, next year, she'll start the second project for two euro house. Okay, great. Thank you. And then Mauricio, not last, but... Hello? Mauricio? No. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So let's start off um, with you, Meredith. So you obviously went through this program. Um, perhaps you could let people know sort of where you're from, why you did this program and sort of how you feel about it. Sure. Um, I am originally from a small town called, uh, well, outside of Peoria, Illinois. Um, I've lived in Chicago for the last 16 years and I started a process um, in November of 2018 of um, looking into getting dual citizenship in Italy because my father's family is from Sicily. And through that process, I realized that my um, dad's family from, was from the village of Sambuca. Um, later on, a few people had forwarded me um, articles from CNN stating that there was a town in Sicily that ha was going to do a one euro auction of homes. Um, and I realized that was the same town that my family was from. Um, I had never, I'd been to Italy a few times, but never to Sicily, never to Sambuca, but I, on a whim, um, put in a bid and um, found out about a month and a half later that I won the bid. Um, and about a month and a half after that, I made the trip to Sambuca to see the home for the first time. So um, can you explain to me, Mary, like you say you made a bid, but yep. isn't this a one euro home program? So what is this about a bid? Yep, it is a, it is a one euro home program. So the way that it worked with Sambuca and there are different types of, um, the process is not the same across the board, but with Sambuca, the process was they listed 16 homes and um, they had a, a minimum starting bid of one euro. So you could start at one euro going up and bid whatever you wanted to. And they essentially took all of the bids for each of the homes. Um, you had to write down what, what properties you wanted to bid on. You could bid on a maximum of two. You had to wire 5,000 euro as a deposit at the time you did the bid and there was a deadline. Um, and then they took all of the bids and the highest bidder for each property won the property with the guarantee that they would complete the work um, by the end of three years um, to do the renovation. So I was, bid the high, I, I bid on two properties, one of the two properties I won my bid. Um, mm -hmm. So I did not pay one euro. I paid 5,555 euro, um, which I still feel like is a real bargain for, for a dream. Um, but, uh, that was basically the process. I got an email from the municipality letting me know, uh, a month and a half after the due date that I had won the bid and I made the first trip to Sambuca, um, about a month after that. Gotcha. Okay. So did you become a Italian citizen before you engaged in this process or afterwards? I did. I did not. Um, I'm still working through that process. I have submitted my request, but there are a couple of items that have to be um, taken care of before that, but I'm at the very final stage of that. Um, and as a U.S. citizen, um, I'm sure you know this, we're not required to become U.S. citizen, uh, sorry, Italian citizens to own property in Italy. Um, we do have reciprocity with, with Italy because it, Italians can buy uh, property in the U.S. without becoming citizens. We have the same right um, in Italy. So I am doing it, but that's more of me wanting to because of my family heritage, not as a necessity for this process. Okay, all right. Um, so, Alessandro and Valeria, why don't you talk to us a little bit about this sort of process of how the how this one euro property process works? And you know, we've heard we've heard sort of an example and sort of how this bid process works. And you know, if I like a property, you know, what are your tips for success in that process? So, why don't we start with Alessandro, and then I'll come to Valeria second. Okay. So, uh, well, the, when it comes to one euro homes, uh, I would suggest first to 
uh, visit the property at least virtually so that you can have a, a real feeling of how the property looks like and you can estimate uh, more or less how much it will cost you to renovate. Uh, because uh, sometimes it's also interesting to check other properties in the regular market to make a comparison. So my advice is if you want to have like a, a brand new property, a big one, and you have a lot of uh, in money to invest in, maybe the one euro home is a good uh, you know, target. But if you perhaps look more for uh, uh, you know, an as an investment, maybe just like you want to get a better return and have something that you can live in already at, from day one, Maybe you can check into the regular market as well because the prices are not that high anyway. So my tip is like to probably uh, keep an open uh, mind on that. Okay. Understood. Ah, Mauricio, good. Hey, buonasera. Um, good evening, everybody. Perhaps you could, perhaps we can just take a break, Maurizio, and you can just introduce yourself as everyone else just had. I'm Maurizio Berti. I'm the founder of the OneEurohouses.com website and that's all okay all right so we were just talking about the program how the one euro program works how the auction works and how you can best sort of position yourself for success in that process and other tips so i'll come back to you but i'd promise to ask valeria for her view so let's take that and then let's come back to you valeria uh, so, um, yes more or less i agree with what alexander alexander says i had to have a look at the house because of course the one year house are house that need renovation so um, have an idea of what it looks like the house what kind of work the house need is always better than buy without C of course it's choice but we always advise that uh, even because you really have an idea of um, what is the feeling of the of the house, uh, you know, you can better understand what are the story characteristic of the house, um, what kind of things you can um, leave in the house and which one need to change it. Um, of course, it's, uh, it's an investment. Uh, so because I like uh, some book a program also in Musumeli uh, program, you have three years of time for renovation of the house. Um, so um, it's more an experience. Uh, most of our clients that decided to buy a property here, what they want, like the reason why they choose to be part of this project, it's, you know, start something bigger, like, uh, you know, start with a house that the price is, uh, because in Somalia, the price is really one euro. Um, so like start with this small amount for a house and then, you know, have a house here that most of our clients say that is, you know, their dream or um, Italy is quite famous outside of Italy. So like everyone want to have a house here. So um, that is my basically like bring someone, especially sometimes we always provide uh, estimate for builders. Uh, so at least you are really aware of what you are buying. So that's, it's my, my tips. So bring someone that, or sometimes ask that ask. seems to be the common advice between you and alexandra is um with these one euro properties make sure of what you're getting yourself into right it's going to require substantial renovation substantial work so make sure you visit it and make yeah. sure you have a plan and make sure you know what you're getting into that that seems to be what you two are saying yes so Maurizio, you 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 founded the website what are your thoughts on this Oh, uh, uh, I prefer speaking Italian, if you can. I, il progetto Casa Un Euro nasce per il rilancio dei borghi abbandonati italiani, sostanzialmente, e con l'abbandono c'è necessariamente il degrado e il depauperamento del patrimonio immobiliare. Per superire a questo, i sindaci hanno deciso alcuni comuni di vendere gli immobili abbandonati. Just hold on a second, Mauricio. Looking at where our audience are, 90% don't speak Italian. So perhaps yes, we can I know, have someone translate as we go through. Okay. Would anyone be willing to translate for Mauricio? I can if you want to. Pietro, that would be super. Thank you. So perhaps if you could just translate what Mauricio's just said, then Mauricio can continue. 
Okay, Maurizio, can, can you start again, please? Okay. Il progetto Casa Un Euro nasce per eh, risolvere il problema dell'abbandono dei borghi abbandonati che sono nelle aree rurali italiane. Yeah. So the uh, One Euro um, Home Project uh, raises from the, um, to solve the, the problem that the Italy had um, of abandoning uh, small uh, villages in the south of Italy. Right. L'obiettivo è il recupero della funzione del paese vendendo le case abbandonate al prezzo simbolico di un euro alle persone che hanno intenzione poi di accollarsi tutte le spese per la ristrutturazione. Yes, and of course the aim is to um, have more people coming into these villages, um, selling the properties at one euro, but uh, uh, the buyers will have to then uh, uh, take care of the uh, restoration costs. Il progetto nasce nel 2009 a Gangi, in Sicilia. The project starts in 2009 in Gangi, which is a small town in, Sic in Sicily. Ma fino al 2014 Gangi eh, vendette poche case. Up to 2014, just a few properties were sold in Gangi. Il grande lancio, il grande sviluppo del progetto Agangi ci fu tra il 2014 e il 2015 dove vendettero 100 case. In 2014 and 2015 they sold instead 100 properties in Ganji. Importante fu anche l'indotto economico che questa operazione portò nel piccolo comune di Ganji. Yeah, it brought, uh, I mean, this project brought uh, into Ganji a lot of... Uh, Uh, financial resources, of course. No. In qualsiasi caso, già dal 2009-2010, altri comuni in Italia, in ordine sparso e senza organizzarsi fra di loro, iniziarono il progetto, aderirono a questo progetto. Yes, other villages in the south of Italy um, joined this project together with Bianchi, starting from 2009-2010 as well. I grandi media internazionali si interessarono a questo intorno al 2017 e da lì si ebbe la diffusione eh, globale di, di questo progetto appunto nel mondo e ci, si creò tutto questo interesse. Adesso. Uh, starting from 2017, only uh, the media started to, look, to put a look into this project and therefore uh, the, the audience uh, knew about this project starting from 2017, worldwide. Okay. That's all for now. Per ora è tutto, direi. Okay. That's all so, for now, David, Mark. Thank you. So I understand sort of how I get started in this program, but supposing I'm like Meredith, right? I'm an American citizen. I take a property in Italy. Um, let's say I want to go there, live there, be there. Pietro, you're an Italian lawyer. Um, what considerations do I have in terms of my ability to be in Italy and enjoy my property and then, you know, potentially stay there? If We have a lot of people interested, I know I'm retiring to Italy. So what do I need to think about when I want to use my property? And then perhaps even more for some people, they might want to even live in Italy. Yes, first of all, <clears throat> it is necessary. I mean, the purchase of a property in Italy does not allow a non-European citizen to be able to live in Italy more than three months every six. So 190 days up to 180 days. Um, so therefore, if someone wants to purchase a property from a, a non-European country, uh, it is possible at the condition of re reciprocity. So um, this is possible Uh, uh, at the condition that it is possible for an Italian uh, in, uh, citizen to purchase a property in the country from where the buyer is uh, coming from. So this is the first uh, step to check. Um, then um, if this is uh, uh, checked and it's confirmed, Um, the foreign uh, individual can purchase, is free to purchase a property in Italy um, to do all the renovation works. 
um, and to um, possibly uh, live um, in Italy for less than three months every six. If he instead would like to stay for longer than that, uh, it is necessary to um, get a visa uh, and then a permit of stay, permesso di soggiorno, um, which is uh, uh, something different. So the Italian government does, does not provide directly uh, a visa for uh, non-European citizens just for the fact that they purchased a property in Italy. So this is very important to understand. Um, then, of course, uh, the purchase of a property in Italy is not a simple process. Uh, it, um, it goes uh, through uh, preliminary contracts uh, and to, 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 to complete with the final purchase deed, which is signed before an Italian notary public. Um, a lot of people um, understand that the notary public uh, um, it, is a sort of a uh, lawyer who assists the party pur purchase the purchase party, but this is not true. The notary public is involved only normally only at the end of the purchase process, um, uh, before uh, whom uh, it is necessary to sign a final purchase deed. But the uh, previous contracts, normally an offer and possibly a preliminary contract are signed by the parties and all the relevant conditions are inserted in this contract. So even if a lawyer is not legally necessary to purchase a property, it is always strongly advisable to uh, instruct a lawyer to do this because uh, the lawyer would put all the relevant conditions to protect uh, the buyer against possible issues. For example, the good title on the property, uh, the uh, legal conformity of the property with building permission and planning regulations. Um, and this is something that happens very often. Uh, I mean, buying a property or being uh, interested in purchasing a property, which has issues, uh, especially with regards to uh, legal conformity of the same property um, with building permits and planning regulations. So uh, this is mainly the process uh, in a few words uh, to, purchase, uh, to purchase a property. Um, then of course, uh, an individual who is uh, uh, purchasing a property and wants to relocate in Italy has to uh, think about a lot of issues, uh, including uh, taxes. So um, if the uh, individual takes up residency in Italy and the move relocates to Italy, uh, he needs to uh, have a, uh, advice um, from a specialist international accountant with regards to taxes, um, because he may be considered tax uh, liable in Italy. Of course, I believe Nicolò will, uh, will, um, will be more, will go into this more in detail. I don't want to uh, take topics from him. Um, Yes, and this is something that needs to be uh, planned well in advance. Together, yeah, well, just, to, just to clarify, because I'm getting a question, just to make sure people understand the clear. If I do a one euro property, right, <clears throat> and I win, and I have a great plan, let's say to spend lots and lots of money on the property, do I have to reside in Italy? No. You can purchase the property as any other property, uh, and then you can do the renovation works on the property. Uh, you don't need to be resident in Italy. Uh, of course, it's uh, the condition of reciprocity. So depending from where, which country you are coming from, I mean, mm. those who, European countries, US, South America, and many other countries met the condition of reciprocity with Italy, right? Okay. So uh, if this condition is met, uh, then you can purchase a property, carry out all the renovation works. It is very important also for the renovation works to have a proper contract with the builder and the director of the works for this, because it happens quite often that the builder are late on, the, uh, on carrying out the works, etc. But yeah, the answer is uh, uh, yes, it is possible to purchase a property without taking up residency in Italy. 
Meredith, did you use a lawyer? If you used a lawyer, would you do that same again? If you didn't use a lawyer, would you use a lawyer if you did this again? Um, I did not use a lawyer. And I, 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 if I did it again, I would probably just do it the same way that I did it. That being said, um, you know, the process that I used of never having been there, of never checking out any of the homes, of not having really anything in place and kind of doing it on a whim, understanding that I was going to have to deal with the outcome of that is probably not what I would recommend for most people to do. So um, for myself, I would do it the same way. For other people, I would recommend engaging with a lawyer, engaging with someone like Alessandro that is a um, real estate agent who knows you know far more about that, engaging with someone like Giuseppe who's uh, an architect, you know, I, if I were making a recommendation to other people, I would say get other professionals involved to understand what um, the outcome of all of this is going to be and how much you're actually going to have to spend, what the rules are around it. Um, because, you know, it was very easy for me to do that um, on my own, knowing that my family's from there and I was going to do it regardless. But, you know, in most cases, that's not the situation. And you should spend, a, you know, that extra money to make sure that you really know what you're getting yourself into and that you're doing the process um, correctly so that you don't have to spend a lot more money on the back end of that um, or have an outcome that you know, you're know you not hoping for because you um, misstepped along the way. Now, did you have a lawyer handle your Italian naturalization process? No, yourself? nope. Yourself? No, I, didn't have a, I did not have an attorney handle anything. I've done it all on my own. Okay. But you have a very clear sort of family linkage, correct? So your case might I, be straightforward. Yeah, I, I do. I have a very, yes. It, it, I mean, I uh, the only thing that I had to do is pay for someone to do the um, translation um, from English to Italian for the documents, everything else I did myself. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, Nicolo, Pietro mentioned taxes, right? And I know that's your field of expertise, perhaps, you know, just to remind everyone, because there's a lot of never seen a conference call with so many experts, which is a good thing. There's a lot of expertise for people, but it's perhaps also hard for some of the attendees to remember who's who. So Niccolo is, a, I think, an Italian lawyer who, you know, we've worked with a little while, um, who's an expert in Italian taxation, correct, Niccolo? That's correct. Um, I mainly help foreign nationals relocating to Italy in regard to their taxes. What's the tax impact if you decide to live in Italy? So how can you help us? You know, Pietro is a lawyer who helps with other elements of the process, naturalization, all these things. You know, why, why does someone need, you know, as Pietro was saying, a separate tax advisor? And what are the considerations people need to think about from a tax perspective when they're thinking about this one euro property program in particular, but perhaps moving to Italy more generally? Correct. So there are a few things to, to take care of in regards to taxes. Whenever you purchase a home, you own the house, you, or whether you live habitually or not. And if you decide to reside long term in Italy, you may face impact on your worldwide income. Therefore, you need to file taxes to Italy and pay tax. So there are a few good news. Um, the first thing is in regards to renovating the property, as I see so many questions about that. Since 2020, Italy introduced a super bonus scheme. Basically, if you renovate a property, make it more energy efficient and or improve the seismic response of the, big, of the building itself, the government rewards you with a 110% tax credit on qualifying expenditure. So if you spend 50K, you get back 55K of tax credit. I guess the question I would have, Niccolo, about that is, what does it mean to make something seismic proof, right? Like, does that mean you, does that mean it has to be certified by an earthquake specialist and you're really dealing with very technical things? Or will, can you kind of fit any major building structural renovation into that? As a practical matter, what does that mean? So as a practical matter, you need to, to, to perform some invasive renovation. And by invasive, I mean new roof, uh, new floors, um, improving the structure of the building itself. It's something regular whenever you decide to perform a full renovation of a home, which very likely your one euro home needs. So yeah, Meredith is laughing. <laughs> I mean, she knows what she's been through. The good news is that whatever you spend on that, you get 110% back, which you can trade to a bank. 
So potentially, you can drive your renovation costs to zero. That's a good. Hold on a second. When you say you can trade it to a bank, Nicolo, what do you mean? You sell the credit, or what, what do you mean? By Correct. That? So you perform the renovation. There's a certified accountant like me that provides a sworn statement saying the renovations are proper and they fit the criteria set by the law. So now you are awarded a 110% tax credit. With that credit on hand, you can sell it to a bank, the post office, financial institution, and they give you cash back. Of course, they retain a percentage as their profit. I was gonna, my question was, going, do you get dollar for dollar credit? And how much, yeah. how much of that credit do you see? Depends on the banking institution, but normally they pay 100% of what you paid. Wow. So that means that if I buy one of these properties, in effect, um, at least some of the renovations I make are effectively paid for by the Italian government. Is that correct? Correct. Wow, that's pretty, pretty good. And that's for, regardless of the residency, you need to buy a home. You need to be the owner of that home. It doesn't matter if you reside in Italy, if you pay taxes to Italy, if you live overseas, the tax credit is attached to the home in Italy. That's great. Um, okay. So what other tax considerations are? I get it that there's some tax support and there's some support available from the government of Italy for these renovations. But say, for example, in Mary Def's case, or, you know, I have two passports, one of them's UK. Let's pretend I'm not an American. I'm a UK person. So if I'm doing the program or Mary Def's doing the program as a US person, you mentioned sort of worldwide tax, but perhaps you can just give us a little bit more, um, a little bit more detail on some of the pitfalls and not just the pitfalls, but how someone can prevent falling into that pitfall, if you understand what I'm saying, how they can prevent unnecessary taxation. Yeah. So um, just like a quick caveat about um, Italian taxes. So you are required to pay taxes on your worldwide income only if, you if you're a tax resident of Italy. So once you're a tax resident, you have to pay tax on your worldwide income. However, you can plan before moving to Italy to restructure your wealth because on top of income tax, you're required to pay wealth tax on your foreign investment, non-Italian investment, bank accounts, shares, homes held overseas. So the first thing to do is assess how much your tax liability will be once in Italy and if any steps, any planning step needs to be taken before moving your residency to Italy. The good news is that Italy introduced new regimes available for new residents, new tax regimes, most notably the pensioners regime in the southern areas of Italy, where you can pay a flat 7% tax on your foreign income for 10 years, or especially for digital nomads, if they move to the south, they pay tax on 10% of the earnings for five years. And the high net worth individuals of 100,000 flat tax for new residents of Italy, and that lasts for 15 years. So there are a few categories you may fit in that can benefit your tax liability to reduce greatly. Sounds to me the key is to come speak to a tax expert before I yeah. even start this process so I can understand. I'm um, a little biased on that, but I would say yes. <laughs> All right. So I get the idea of what's going on here. It's obviously the renovations are key. Just listening to what everyone's saying, I get credit from the Italian government, but essentially I'm probably buying a house that needs, Mary Death keeps smiling and nodding whenever we say there's a lot of work, right? And there's a lot of things involved. So it seems to me an architect's probably pretty, uh, pretty fundamental, Giuseppe. So what do you typically, when you, I mean, personally, I've looked at some of these wonderful looking villas in Tuscany that are, that are wrecks and they need a lot of work. So from an Italian architect's perspective, taking a property in Italy that needs work, what, how can you help? What's involved and what are sort of the processes and typical costs? Uh, okay, Giuseppe just asked me to help him with translation. So I'll be okay. translating him uh, into Italian, your question, and then uh, translate back. Perfect. Thank you, English. Alessandro. Okay, no worry. Okay, uh, quindi Giuseppe, ti, ti traduco quello che ti ha chiesto, sì. poi faccio la traduzione al rovescio. 
Allora, lui mi ha chiesto, visto che tu sei un architetto, oltre a essere il vice sindaco di Sambuca, eh, voleva sapere eh, dal punto di vista di un architetto quali sono eh, i consigli che tu puoi dare alle persone che vogliono investire eh, in Italia, in immobiliare e avere maggiori informazioni anche su quali, eh, quali sono diciamo, le, 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 le questioni diciamo, burocratiche le problematiche diciamo, dovute al, alle questioni burocratiche per sì. strutturare, eccetera, eccetera. Eh, io la prima cosa che consiglio ovviamente di scegliere una casa che ha uno charme, no? che, ha un sapore, che, che ha il sapore del borgo, perché penso che la, diciamo, la forza di, di, una, di un borgo è quello di, di, di avere un fabbricato che ha ancora delle volte antiche, che ha un prospetto significativo, no? Let me go. So the first thing he would advise is uh, uh, to choose a property that has a charm. He, uh, being an architect for him is very important that uh, the place you're going to buy is beautiful and has some ancient uh, uh, or historical uh, uh, artifacts. So he, would, uh, he, he recommends buying into small towns because in Italy, the small towns went through a lesser degree of development uh, over the last decades. So you can still find a lot of these charming, uh, uh, nice uh, uh, architecture elements. E, al, in merito, ovviamente, dico, ci sono altre condizioni. Per quanto riguarda la parte burocratica, ovviamente sia l'architetto, ma anche poi il notaio, è quello un po' che mh, certifica tutta la, diciamo, la, eh, la diciamo, Vabbè, aiutami tu, dai, mi manca la parola che certifica un po' eh, la... Eh, diciamo, che non è che un fabbricato da perfetto. Per fare il progetto. Fare. Sì, perfetto, sì. Cioè che non sia un fabbricato abusivo, ma è difficile generalmente, essendo un immobile vecchio, no? Che troviamo un fabbricato abusivo, eh, che sia la successione un po' delle proprietà sia regolare, che ci siano tutti i documenti in regola e pertanto... E questo è il compito del, del notaio. Ovviamente tipo la scelta del notaio capace, un notaio molto serio, ovviamente aiuta diciamo, a evitare di fare qualche errore. Generalmente, e poi magari la forza di Sambuca qual è stata, eh, ne ho parlato con te più volte, che l'interlocutore è il comune, cioè la vendita l'ha fatto non un privato ma il comune, pertanto di per sé l'ente pubblico ha dentro fabbricati sani, cioè non ha, è difficile che abbia un fabbricato abusivo, abusivo che abbia acquisito il patrimonio comunale. Ok, let, let, me, go for, let me go with the translation. So what Giuseppe just said is that uh, um, the first tip is like try to find uh, serious professionals, especially like architects or ge geometra, which is like a surveyor in English, and uh, uh, a notary. Because if you find serious professionals doing that job, you will uh, expose yourself to less risk of finding a, uh, you know, a property that has not the paper Uh, cor like correct, so you can maybe then have to pay a fine to the government in order to uh, renovate because sometimes they were building uh, they were building up uh, houses that were not con uh, like were not respecting the rules so they and they never paid for uh, uh, like uh, giving uh, permission then to uh, have actually a, re a real um, I would say like a real uh, um, uh, like a, a real certificate of feasibility for this property. And uh, the other uh, thing that Giuseppe was just mentioning me is that uh, when you buy like into the one euro home uh, uh, project together with the town hall, it's very hard that you will find properties that are not uh, legally binding because if the, uh, if the town is involved, so you have like the, basically you have the public uh, involved, uh, they make like uh, due diligence before in order not to create issues with the buyers so it's quite safe you have to be, maybe watch out more when you buy like on the regular market from uh, private uh, you know real estate agents but you need to just find the serious people and Italy is plenty of them you just need to maybe ask like for some local to refer you and to get some uh, decent uh, level of uh, honesty let's say mm. very good okay well thanks for that so There's a lot of questions. I think, you know, we've already been going for, time goes quickly, three quarters of an hour. Um, so what I'd like to do is sort of summarize what we've been talking about and then really sort of go through some questions. And Matteo, I'm about to call on you, so just a warning. Um, 
Valeria, we, we just heard once from you, and obviously you have clients going through this process. So what, um, if you summarize a good way to go about this process, what professionals would you advise a client to get involved? Um, and what, what, what does a well-managed process look like? So um, what I advise is, um, has like a state agency, we manage a lot, we already give a lot of service, uh, like um, more or less what the other says, uh, like we check that the building that is uh, for sale is um, all the paper are correctly, so there is no any illegality on on the property because like we check the plans, we check the title deeds. Uh, so the who decided to buy the house, it's one hundred percent sure that what he's buying it's uh, um, it's exactly what the person saw. Um, then what I advise is to hire uh, a good architect or engineer. Um, to, to inspect the, the house and understand exactly what is allowed to do in this house. Because all these houses are located in the whole part of the town. Um, and the whole part of the town, it's a kind of protecting area. So you cannot really modify uh, completely the house, but there are some rules that you have to follow. Like for example, in the outside of the house, you cannot really change a lot but you have to keep the same style of the house. Um, so have a good architect or engineer that present the correct project following all the rules. It's, uh, it's important so you save money and you avoid to present different project to the municipality that they will not approve, then you have to represent and everything. Um, then um, I also advise, especially how uh, the lawyer says, if you plan is to uh, move especially you know if you want to live more time here uh, than just the three months that are allowed it's better if you have a lawyer that following all the entire process especially if you want to uh, live permanently here because uh, we have some client that uh, live permanently here in Musumeli uh, but they have they had problem to get the residency here so it's what it was not easy for them uh, to get the residency. So if you have a good lawyer, it's easier to, uh, to find the solution of uh, what is required. Um, then about the builders um, and the work, um, the municipality, owns, it's really often that you can find a list of all the uh, builders that the municipality advise. Uh, also, if uh, what we advise is to get more uh, estimate of the different person, so you can at the end really choose the one that uh, really match with um, with what do you really want. Thank you. So, few questions about the cost of these different professionals. So, Alessandro, in your experience, and I'll ask the same thing to Mauricio. People are asking. You know, how much does it cost to have the lawyer? How much does it cost to engage in a uh, architect? How much does it cost to get tax advice from Niccolo? So when you think of the cost of this and engaging different professionals, obviously, I would think if I do a, you know, if I build a 30 room palace in the middle of the country, that's going to be a very different set of costs to the average one euro house. But in the sort of normal scope of things that you see, what are, the, what are the sort of general costs for, for professional services? So, like, in my experience, uh, like, depend, of course, uh, as you said, on uh, which kind of uh, investments uh, you're going to do and how difficult is your case. Each case is, is different. But if we need to come up with, like, a, a statistical um, estimation, I would say that if you want to hire an architect or surveyor plus you need to hire a lawyer for your immigration and uh, a tax consultant for uh, uh, providing you like the best option uh, in terms of saving up money. I would say are around uh, 10,000 euros. Okay. That's an that's, average. That's reasonable. All right. So perhaps you can ask Giuseppe for us. Like people are asking about the cost, um, Alessandro, of the renovations. And obviously that's going to depend very much on the property. But what sort of does Giuseppe see sort of as a reasonable range 
for the costs on the types on the renovation on the types of projects that people buy and then Mary Def I'm going to ask you you know what was what what will happen with one your one euro home how much is it going to cost and then what do you think the ultimate value is going to be so Alessandro if you could kindly ask Giuseppe that I'd appreciate it okay allora Giuseppe eh, vogliono sapere qui sul sì. discorso delle ristrutturazioni più o meno eh, quali sono i costi associati siccome tanti nelle, nella chat qui di Zoom stanno facendo la domanda su quanto costa poi ristrutturare una casa chiaramente i prezzi variano a seconda del progetto che fai tu ne hai visti tanti lì a Sambuca ma se dovessi fare una media eh, opp- e poi dirmi anche magari i due estremi quella la meno, es- la meno costosa e la più costosa che hai visto eh, ristrutturare eh, quanto, quanto era l'importo così posso poi sì, tradurlo certo. e allora eh, ovviamente la premessa tua di farla perché è importante perché dipende dal progetto e anche dalla scelta dei materiali no? E dipende dalla consistenza dell'immobile è chiaro che un immobile distrutto costa molto di più un immobile in buone condizioni costa meno e io penso che la media potrebbe essere e dalle 750 euro al metro quadrato alle 1300-1400 ovviamente la variabile il range è poi inversamente proporzionale sai Alessandro alle dimensioni della casa perché se tu compri una stanza e devi mettere una caldaia un bagno una finestra un contratto della luce lo metti come se compri una casa di 10 di 10 mani cioè la respira un bagno ti costa quanto ti costa in una casa di, di 500 metri quadrati no? per esempio, quindi se vogliamo in proporzione più grande la casa leggermente potrebbe abbassare il costo io ti dico dalle 700 alle 1300-1400 poi la scelta dei materiali è importante perché eh, ovviamente chi compra a Sambuca questo anche sottolineiamolo, c'è cioè chi compra una casa di un euro, chi compra a Sambuca ovviamente è gente anche, c'è il cliente un cliente anche di charme, di qualità no? c'è un professionista Pertanto poi non si accontenta di scelte low cost. Ovviamente poi spesso si va a cadere su cose importanti, di designer, e Meredith ne sa qualcosa. Ok, maybe, maybe I will, otherwise I will forget all, all you are saying, so let's like, stop you for a second and then I'll, uh, I'll translate to you back. Ok, so you would say that um, more or less the estimation for renovation cost per square meter is in a range between 750 euros and 1,300 euros. Of course, that, it, that depends a lot on the material you're going to choose, uh, but we have to say that in Sambuk, at least, the kind of buyers that are coming in are people that uh, don't want to have like low cost, uh, uh, they don't want to have a low cost approach. They tend more to see their house as, as, if, as if it's a dream house for their holidays in Italy, Uh, to bring their family there, so they want to make something uh, unique, something special, and they tend to be uh, professionals, uh, like wealthy individuals that like to invest a certain amount of money in order to have something special. And another important uh, fact that Giuseppe just uh, highlighted is that um, uh, opposite to like maybe common sense or, or to, co- to the common sense of people that don't know economics, uh, if you Uh, renovate uh, like a property that is huge uh, at the end uh, in uh, like proportionally you're gonna spend less because there are certain fixed costs that you have to always keep in mind and they don't uh, change by, uh, if you buy a small property of uh, 50 square meters or 500 square meters so that's also important to keep into consideration when you uh, take your decision because some expense some bureaucratic expenses are gonna be there anyway whether if you buy a small property or a big one. Uh, also, like certain, uh, uh, like, you know, if you want to have a ba- big bathroom, like the, the expensive uh, um, products, like, for example, a boiling, a boiler, or uh, uh, all the electric uh, uh, system of the property and so on, those are like kind of um, uh, fixed expenses. So at the end, it's better maybe to buy something. Uh, well, it's not better, like, it depends on your possibilities, but. Uh, you have to keep into consideration like the economy of scale when you do the renovation. Uh, Giuseppe, vuoi dire qualcos'altro? C'è... E... Something else? Ma non, non, in verità non, so, non saprei. Tipo... Un'altra cosa che potevo dire, non so, io in verità ho un video, un video promo, però non so se ormai è troppo tardi per condividerlo, ma è come si potrebbe condividere. Un video promo su Sambuca anche in inglese, 
peccato mi sono ricordato solo ora perché se la okay. possiamo condividerlo uh, I'll ask Mark who is the moderator to about that so he, Giuseppe he has, a, he has like a video that the municipality of Sambuca has made in order to Just promote... due minuti due minuti dura It, it, it takes, it's like a two minutes video. I don't know if it's possible to, uh, for him to, or if he has the technical capabilities to do that. Uh, like if he want, he, or maybe he can just put, like he can just share the Perhaps link Alessandro, in the what webinar we can do chat. Is we can send the, a link to the video to all of the participants, everybody who joined, and perhaps everyone who was invited, which was, I think 700 and something people signed up. We've had about 250. Perhaps okay. if we send a link to Giuseppe's video to all 700 and something people who signed up for this event, would that work? Yeah, uh, okay, Giuseppe, ha detto che è meglio se lo mandiamo direttamente come link a tutti i 750 partecipanti del, del, del webinar, perché Vabbè. adesso sarebbe complesso. Vabbè, ora, ci, ora, ci provo, ora ci provo a, a linkarlo appena non, non parliamo più okay. noi, il pezzerino nella chat, va bene? Perfect. And then if people have particular questions about the video, can they contact Giuseppe? E poi chiede Mark se dovessero avere poi delle domande dopo che hanno visionato il video, possono contattare te o qualcuno. Sì, sì, sì. sì. Metto anche la mia mail, magari scrivo nella mia mail. Dico. Ok, he's gonna add the email as well. I mean, that's great because, you know, I'd looked at Italy myself for buying things and finding a, re finding a reliable architect is difficult. And getting to get an architect to answer questions is difficult. So I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a huge plus. Mary Def is laughing. <laughs> so Mary Def, with that lovely smile, why don't we come back to you? So your process, obviously you probably chose Sicily for family reasons because people were asking about that. But, um, but, you know, how did you select the property? And then um, people are asking how much, if you're willing yeah. to share. Everybody you wants to know the money, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and then what do you think that what do you think it's worth now? <laughs> um, so I yeah, I chose Sambuca specifically because my family was from there. Again, I had not been there and I knew very little about it. Um, I would recommend though go to the town before you buy so that you know you're buying in a good area and a good location that you want, you know, that you like the house. Um, as far as you know, after that was done, I've seen a ton of questions here about how did you find your your the people that are working for you and who's working for you. Um, I, before I went there for the first time, um, I was on Instagram. I have an Instagram account. I started following the hashtags for Sambuca and I actually found my architect through Instagram and it is Giuseppe who's on this call with us. Um, as you can tell, I speak very little Italian. He speaks very little English, but we, uh, we do a lot of translating. Alessandro helps us with that sometimes. Um, so I started working with him first and he helped me find my contractor and my geometra. Um, your plans do need to be approved before you move forward. You can't just engage someone and start making renovations. The plans do need to be approved. Um, I picked the home that I picked from a picture. There were 16 homes, the highest bidder wins. I picked a dollar amount based on knowing that if something went tragically wrong, I wasn't going to be devastated by the loss. Um, the specific home that I picked, I, it looked good on as far as the location based on the fact that it was close to a church, which I knew would be um, a good thing in Italy, uh, just from having been there before, I knew it would be centrally located. Um, other than that, it had a balcony, which I liked, and it, uh, the house number was five, which is my favorite number. Yeah. Um, it was pretty yeah. not technical as far as how I made the decisions. <laughs> Luckily, it's all worked out. Um, so I spent 5,555 euro on the initial home. That was the one euro home. Um, I ended up being able to purchase the home next door. Um, just Giuseppe actually helped me with that as well, but I did a private sale. In that home, I spent um, 22,000 euro on the purchase price for that. If I wanted to do, you know, as, as um, Alessandro was saying that, um, you know, a lot of people are, are not doing the minimum renovation to make it in living condition. I'm also one of those people. So I probably could have spent about 30,000 euro and it would have been completely fine as far as living condition. Um, and it would have been a, a minimum renovation, but I wanted to kind of make this my dream home. And because it's so much more affordable to do that in Italy than it is in downtown Chicago, um, I'm kind of- So hold on a second, let's get this right. Right, you said you bought your home for 5,000 euros. We yeah. heard that average professional costs around about 10,000 euros. That's 15. And then you said you put 30,000 into renovations? 
So that's just 45, roughly 45, 50,000 euros in total. Is that, am I missing something? No, so I spent 5,555 euro on the first one. I spent 22,000 on the second one. At a minimum, I needed to spend about 35,000 just to get it to living condition. My budget is actually 100,000. Okay, got it. We'll have all in spent like 100, and, uh, just under 130,000 euro on the renovation. If, if uh, Giuseppe uh, it keeps it on target. <laughs> <laughs> the goal though is to keep it at 130,000. That's that's the target. But again, it's just to give you guys a, an understanding there. That's it's four bedrooms. It's four and a half bathrooms. There's two large terraces. There's three balconies. There's two living rooms, dining room, um, full kitchen. Uh, it's a it's a very large home. So that's you know again going back to what we're saying here. It's a, it's one tenth of what I to renovate a home the same size in um, in Chicago. So it's still very inexpensive um, when you compare. So I can confirm that I saw it with my own eyes. It's a beautiful property. Yes. <laughs> you, can, you can see the lake near Sambuca from the terrace. So yeah. for that price, I think it's totally worth to it, that. For sure. Maurizio, if I don't want to buy a house in Sicily um, because I don't have family there, then where else can I look? Where else is worth looking in Italy? There's a lot of questions about how do I identify a good area of Italy to buy a home and how do I find listings and, and how do I actually find somewhere before I even begin the due diligence, which Giuseppe talked to us about an architect, different things. How do, how do I actually find the sort of raw leads on properties and how do I know in which towns to look at across the country? Pietro, puoi tradurmi cortesemente, brevemente la domanda di Mark? Pietro, can you help us out? Yes, yes, okay. Sì. Prego, Maurizio. Eh, no, se mi traduci la domanda, per favore, poi rispondo volentieri. Yeah. Mark, could you please repeat the question? Sure. So, you know, in Mary Death's case, right, she chose Sicily because she has family there. But there's lots of questions from people who don't have family, perhaps, somewhere in Italy. So they're wondering about how do I go about choosing a town or a municipality in Italy for, for, for this home? And then perhaps once I found that, how do I go about finding subject properties and leads to properties? Um, Maurizio, uh, Mark chiede, Meredith uh, ha cercato una casa eh, nel luogo dove, eh, da dove veniva la sua famiglia e quindi diciamo aveva un obiettivo ben preciso. Per gli altri, eh, quali sono i criteri secondo te da seguire eh, per scegliere il luogo in cui cercare la, una casa da, da acquistare o meno. Una domanda molto interessante. Bisogna dire innanzitutto Very che sono... Question, Mark. This is from Maurizio. Ok. Ci sono circa 30 paesi in Italia che attualmente hanno la possibilità di vendere case a un euro oppure case a prezzo simbolico, cioè abbandonate in tempi più recenti che necessitano di meno lavori di recupero. Uh, yes, there are uh, about 30 uh, town, towns with a town hall um, being part of this project, of the One Euro Home program. One Euro Home or a symbolic price. It means it needs less work to restore it. Non bisogna di meno lavori di recupero. Yes, One Euro Home or uh, the uh, other, uh, those who are part of the program uh, with the discounted uh, renovation works, yeah. La strada migliore è scegliere l'area d'Italia che è più interessante per loro, tra il nord, il centro, il sud Italia e le isole. Yes, uh, the buyer uh, would need to uh, first uh, choose the area um, of Italy, uh, choosing by north, center, south or islands which are Sicily and Sardinia. Sicily and Sardinia. E in quelle aree cerca quello che è il, le città che propongono questo progetto. I mean, once the, the area uh, among these is chosen, then look for a property, for, for, sorry, look for a town hall that uh, is part of these programs. It's important to say, va, va detto che La metà di questi 15 paesi sono circa in Sicilia. 15 città sono in Sicilia. 15, about, about yeah, half of these um, uh, towns 
15 are located in Sicily. Perciò la scelta è spesso la Sicilia perché diventa più facile trovare la casa che si desidera, oltre che avere un clima particolarmente piacevole tutto l'anno. Sì, so Sicily provides the best offer. Uh, of course, as uh, everybody knows, uh, Sicily has a very nice uh, weather uh, conditions. Molte persone, in qualsiasi caso, mi hanno chiesto sia la Sardegna, che è una bellissima regione e ha quell'idea di isolamento che molte persone cercano. Uh, uh, Maurizio has been contacted and uh, received a lot of interests in Sardinia as well, as an island where uh, to escape uh, from uh, big cities and uh, uh, chaotic life. Oppure la montagna, gli amanti della montagna che preferiscono il Piemonte o l'Appennino centrale. Or in the mountains, so in the Alps or in the Appennini. La miglior scelta è avere le idee chiare su cosa si, si cerca, cosa si vuole. Best choice is, uh, you know, to make uh, ideas clear in order to uh, uh, understand what is uh, the goal for the buyer. But uh, Pietro, the second half of the question is, right, I find a municipality, how do I find the people who are asking? How do I find an actual property? So let's say I choose a village in the Alps, right? Just for example, how, how do I find out about properties that are available there? Sì, Maurizio, Mark chiede, Una volta che ho individuato eh, il comune dove acquistare, come faccio a trovare a vedere le case che voglio eh, valutare? Mm, in genere i comuni eh, mettono a disposizione le foto delle case. Per quanto questo è ben poco significativo. Nel senso che questo non è... Eh, prego, scusa, traduci pure. Sì, some, uh, generally speaking, the town hall's website, they already have uh, um, the um, ad of the properties uh, in their website. Questo però non è esclusivamente un progetto di natura economica, un progetto immobiliare, è un progetto di natura culturale. So this is mainly not a business uh, project. Okay. It's a cultural project. Qui si tratta di scegliere delle aree interne italiane, dei paesi in aree interne italiane, che hanno un grande valore in termini di bellezza, di paesaggi, di prodotti tipici, di stile di vita, di rapporti con le persone. Yes. Um, so it is a matter of choosing places not on the coast where all tourists are going, uh, but are at the same time very beautiful for their landscape, for their culture, for their typical um, products uh, in terms of food and wine mainly. Um, so this, is, uh, this needs to be um, taken uh, um, into very much consideration from the buyers. Molti sindaci chiedono di conoscere i futuri compratori e danno informazioni quasi in modo esplosivo a chi viene in visita in quei paesi. Normally the buyers visit these towns and they are welcomed many times uh, by the mayors of these towns who want to meet the people that are planning to uh, come to these towns to live for the, for the future. È importante conoscere quelli che sono i progetti di sviluppo che hanno i sindaci in quei paesi, progetti di sviluppo per quello che riguarda l'accoglienza, per quello che riguarda le cure sanitarie per le persone anziane o per i bambini o per le scuole, piuttosto che yes. fare una scelta di natura esclusivamente economica e speculativa. Yes, and the same mayors they, and, and the town halls, they provide a lot of services so they are taking care about health, they're taking care about school, of the children of those who are planning to move to uh, these small town halls, um, etc. So it's more, again, what is Maurizio uh, highlighting, 
uh, a um, choice uh, for uh, for the life, for the lifestyle, uh, for the culture and the growing of the individuals, not just a business uh, um, of purchasing a property and uh, not uh, um, developing uh, the individuals together with the with the area. Got it. Concludo so, dicendo yeah. questo. Le case diroccate sono uguali in tutte le parti del mondo. È il panorama che si potrebbe vedere da quella casa diroccata che fa la differenza. Yes, uh, the, the, what Marisa is saying, yes, the, 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 the properties that are to be completely restored um, are the same everywhere, everywhere in the world. But it's important that the view that once the property is restored, uh, the, the purchaser, the, the buyer has uh, it's the most important part and many of these villages have beautiful and very nice views and landscapes gotcha. okay. pietro a very technical quick legal question um before we go to about visiting properties um couple, actually one person asked what is the process for obtaining a home through a judicial auction and is there any special consideration? I think that's probably very much a question for a lawyer. Auction, uh, Mark, do you understand well? To buy a property at auction. That's the question that was asked. Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's not a simple process. So, uh, uh, so these are properties that are, um, uh, where there is a charge, from a creditor, normally, which can be a bank or an Charge meaning lien, right? For American people, when you say charge, they may not, that means a lien in US terms, right? Yes, on the, on the property. And the property is sold at auction. Um, uh, and this is a public auction. It's a proceedings at the court. Uh, and it's a very complicated procedure. Um, so normally, you know, uh, the, you know, buyer or someone who uh, is uh, able to uh, uh, see a property uh, on which uh, in is interested uh, for the purchase at auction, um, he would need, uh, especially if non-Italian, uh, definitely a, a professional, which can be a geometra or a lawyer or an accountant to carry out all the necessary activities. Okay. All right. Um, next question is this, a few people, are, Mary Death said, you know, it was important to go see the property. And there's a few questions, right? I'll try and cover several questions at once. If someone's not in Italy right now, and they would like to come and see the property, what's the practicality of that, Pietro? Um, and there was a particular question from someone from Iran, um, said they had sort of a lot of people in Iran interested in the, pro in the project. Are there any special political considerations for that one country? Uh, well, we have to check the reciprocity on that. Um, I'm not sure if Iran is, uh, has the, uh, met, meet the condition of reciprocity with Italy. Um, uh, we have to check on, on, on Google. Um, it's a pretty simple uh, process. I can let you know at a later stage in a few minutes, uh, if you give me five sure. or ten no minutes. Um, I, will, I will check that and I will let you know. Um, then what, what was the other question? Uh, yes, question is, let's suppose right, right now I happen to be in New York, Pietro. It's easy for me because I have a, what's an EU passport for another 10 days or something. Yes. So I can get on a plane. But if I don't yeah. have an EU passport, uh, let's say I'm in Iran or India and I want to come see a property, how easy is it to get, I guess it's a Schengen visa to come there, right? Uh, yes, uh, normally yes. In, in COVID times, uh, uh, it is possible, uh, I mean, even if at, at, this, at this moment uh, it is not possible for, from, to, to travel from abroad of Europe, from many countries, including the US, uh, into Italy as a tourist. Uh, however, um, um, if this is uh, uh, to purchase a property uh, by requesting a letter from the estate agent, uh, from the seller, from the lawyer, it is possible to include this visit as a business visit. And therefore, it would be allowed for a US citizen, for example, to enter the country uh, just for a few days, normally three or five days, uh, without quarantine. If they want to stay more, they have to quarantine. 
just a, a little note. I mean, I don't know. It might be different for me with a European passport, but I'm coming to Italy on the 26th. And there is now a no, no quarantine flight offered by Delta and Alitalia yeah. from the US, which is great, from the US to Rome, I think. Uh, you're yeah, nodding I, your head, Mary Death. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, so um, you can do 120 hours in country um, from the US. But um, I'm actually booked on a, the no, you have to specifically choose a COVID tested Delta flight um, if you want to bypass quarantine, um, the 14 day quarantine. So you have to get tested through a specific te uh, test um, that Delta requires 72 hours before. Once you get to the airport, you have to do um, another rapid test. And then once you land in Rome, you do um, a second rapid test. So you've done three tests by the time you've land. Um, and if you test negative for all of those, then you can bypass quarantine. Um, for those of you who don't want to go to that um, trouble or, or want to do it remote, I can also answer that. So I ended up buying a second home um, set during COVID while I have not been there. I have not been to Italy since uh, February. Um, and I saw it on Instagram. Somebody else posted it. I liked it. Um, and I reached out and just started getting help on that. And um, even closing on my second home, the private sale home, I've done that during COVID. Um, so, I mean, you can use Google Maps, you can use websites. If you know people in the towns, have them take video of the properties if you can do that. Um, and as far as signing legal documents, you can appoint someone. Um, you can have a notary drop legal documents if you have a notary in Italy. They can drop the documents so that you can do like basically the U.S. equivalent of a power of attorney for property um, to sign off legally on a home purchase um, and, and wire the funds to do so. All this stuff is more difficult, of course, with COVID and not being there, but it is absolutely possible um, to, to start the process if you don't want to wait um, and, you know, and move forward on it before. Um, Let me, seeing as we're talking about travel, let me just ask Matteo. So I should say Matteo is a lawyer who works for my law firm. He's an Italian, he's in Miami, but uh, he helps a lot of Americans move to Italy. Um, and he's just traveling backwards and forwards to Italy himself. Matteo, you're still on mute, are you there? Mm. We'll let him We'll let him be, he's not coming on. But uh, okay, so it's interesting that you can buy a property, um, you can buy a property completely remotely. Um, some countries don't really make that very easy. I guess it was there. I was just thinking as you're talking about that, in terms of the cost for your property, to revisit that, um, sounds like you paid it sort of yourself cash. But yeah. are you familiar with the utilization of the tax credit program Nicolo was talking about and some of these Italian government programs or even giving some kind of mortgage in Italy to, to you know, from a commercial lender to help you with improvement costs? Yeah, I, I found out about those things um, from Nicola as well. So I did, I was not really familiar with them until I met Alessandro, which was after I purchased the home. He started talking to me about it and I started reading articles and then he introduced me. Um, and, and we've been talking about that as to date. Again, I have been doing everything with cash, but from what I understand, um, it is possible to get a mortgage. Um, I don't know what that process is because I haven't done it. You know, I also just for other people that I've spoken with who are in a similar situation to me that did not pay cash. A lot of them are financing through their homes in the U S and taking a, you know, line of credit from their home, um, and using the funds from that to, to refurbish the home in Italy. Um, you know, that's more of what I've seen than someone taking out a mortgage in Italy for a property in Italy. But again, I don't, I, I know it is possible. I just don't know how easy it is to do that. Got it. Understood. Um, Alessandra, okay. seeing as you were the one who told Meredith about this, do you have other clients who have availed themselves of financing for this property and how e these properties and how easy is it to do that? Well, we had just one, uh, like I, in my experience, that wanted to have a mortgage in Italy. And we found uh, w one bank in, in North Italy. In, uh, it's called Intesa San Paolo. I think it's the second biggest bank uh, in, in Italy which provides uh, a mortgage even for non-residents. Of course, they give uh, um, much lesser amount comparing to residents. So I think that you can only fund up to 60% uh, of, the, of the purchase. And then you have to uh, anticipate 40% in capital. 
and, and but the the interest rate is quite low because you know Christine Lagarde is printing a lot of cash in EU, so actually you can uh, get like for one point two percent or something like this. Yeah. So basically, the interest rate is very competitive uh, comparing to the like mm -hmm. for example countries in development uh, like I would say like Iran or Brazil, uh, Russia, and so on. But how easy is it for a non-Italian resident to get a to get uh, lent money in, in the as, Italian well, system? As, as long as you as long as you match, uh, uh, I'm talking about e, I'm, I'm talking about non -Ital, non 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 I'm talking about EU residents right now. So okay. what what we were working with was like a Dutch resident. So I don't know honestly how it works uh, with Brazilians or uh, Iranians or. Russian, but I know that with like EU residents, you can get it quite easily. You only need mm -hmm. to anticipate forty percent to of the capital, and they will fund. They will like give you a mortgage for the remaining sixty percent. Mm -hmm. But we so, can always approach a bank and ask them, right? The worst they can yeah, say of is course. That it's not going to cost you anything. So of Pardon. course, Pietro, yes. Yes. So the condition of reciprocity with uh, Iran is met. Okay, so in 1999, so Iranian uh, people can buy uh, properties. In Great. I, I think part of the question was probably also, right, a lot of countries, unfortunately, have closed their borders to Iranians. It's very, very difficult for an Iranian, for example, to get um, some kind of resident visa to the United States or to many other countries. Grenada, we do a lot of their passport programs. They've closed their program, I think, to Iran. So I think the question was probably the one you answered about is the program available, thank you. But then also what is the climate like in Italy for with regard to accepting people from Iran? Well, uh, as long as, as far as I know, there is no restriction at this, uh, at this stage. So they are allowed to purchase properties in Italy. Italy has a very close relationship historically with, with Iran. So, um, there is no restriction at this stage. Okay, fine. Uh, so, yeah, so it is possible to buy a property. Uh, of course, it is necessary in order to stay in Italy for less than three months every six uh, uh, for the Iranian individual to get uh, a um, visa, a tourist visa, to be able to come to Italy. Um, it is possible also to get a multiple business visa uh, or tourist visa. Which, is, which lasts for uh, several years with the same uh, restriction. So three months every six. The okay. individuals can also stay for longer if they apply for a, another kind of visa into Italy. So I think, you know, there are other people now asking questions about different countries and reciprocity. Um, perhaps the right thing to do, Pietro, is if you would be willing to accept questions from those people individually because obviously we could spend the rest of the day going through every country in the world and you're looking it up. Um, so perhaps it would be easier if people ask those questions uh, directly to you privately, if that's okay. Um, all right, so you know we've been going an hour and a half. There's still a lot of questions. Um, I'm sure that panelists are willing to accept you know, any questions for anyone who has an interest uh, or anything left unsaid um, afterwards. Um, we've still got 186 people online, according to this, so we haven't we haven't bored everybody off. Um, it's obviously a, a topic of great interest. So perhaps what we can do is I can just allow everybody to finish with a comment of advice, your sort of most important piece of advice, if you will. And then, you know, we can certainly provide everybody's contact information so that clients can or people interested can reach out to you. So with that said, um, why don't we start with you, Alessandro? What, uh, if you were to summarize one piece of advice for people considering this program, what would it be? Uh, so, my opinion, uh, a very important, uh, you know, uh, thing to take into consideration is to, of course, make some researches before. So, we live in the information era, so you can just Google it, Google, and start searching information, and then always rely on uh, serious professionals, people that understand your culture as well, because it's not just about speaking language. It's about knowing the culture of the people that are coming in in order to be able to match expectations and so on. So uh, make sure you find people that understand what is important for you. So they will be able to guide you uh, doing the right choices. 
when it comes to uh, my country, well, I, I recommend it to everybody. And that's why I started Retire to Italy. That's why I quit being an expat myself and I came back to Italy because honestly, I didn't find like, uh, you know, like the El Dorado outside my country as we were supposed to believe in the past, you know. So at the end, after many years traveling and living in other countries, which was an amazing experience, and I recommend it to everybody to try to live in other countries because it opens up your mind. It makes you more intelligent, I would say, uh, is that Italy is a beautiful country to live in for many reasons. Like we have amazing weather, Mediterranean diet. We have a public health care. Uh, we have one of the lowest uh, rate of homicides, suicides. So people are kind of happy. I would advise living in Italy for this reason, like for the quality of life. And you can get like a, a property for not even 100,000 euro where in New York, you don't even buy a parking lot. So why not? I mean, it's such a low investment and uh, you can get so much out of it in terms of, you know, health, uh, like health, uh, I would say like uh, well-being and health. So I recommend it to everybody because of that. Can you help us with Giuseppe asking the same question? Uh, ok, Giuseppe, quali, qual, vogliono chiederti quali sono per te, uh, sulla base della tua esperienza, il, cioè, qual è, devi, sum, devi fare un, uh, un, uh, un riassunto sì. del uh, consiglio più importante che daresti a uno straniero che vuole venire a vivere in Italia, vuole acquistare una casa in Italia, quale, quale sarebbe, cioè, che ti viene dal, dal profondo del cuore, diciamo. Ehm, lo ha detto... Prima, Maurizio, eh, scegliere una casa, ma soprattutto scegliere un luogo, scegliere delle persone. Perché noi ci siamo accorti che poi il progetto delle case nero non è un progetto fatto di mura, ma è un progetto fatto di persone, di relazioni, di, di storie, di, eh, di entusiasmo, di, eh, di rapporto col, più con le persone che con le cose. Questa è la vera quello che resta, perché una casa poi se vogliamo in pietra, con la volta, con l'arco, la trovi dovunque, in Sicilia, in Italia, ma anche in altre parti del mondo, ma devi trovare invece un luogo che ti fa sentire a casa propria e non ci diventi solo quando sei cittadino italiano, ma ci diventi quando cominci a comunicare, a stare con la comunità, cioè quando cominci insieme alla comunità a costruire questo rapporto, no? questa è la vera, la vera la cosa più importante, perché c'è il rischio altrimenti che vai... Sì. Finisci questo così... Chiudo. Ah, no, sì, non ti sentivo. Eh, perché ci rischio magari che poi vai, ti vai a inserire in un posto che non ti appartiene. Invece devi, la scelta importante è quella di andare a vivere in un posto vivo. Eh, la nostra eh. esperienza, la nostra esperienza che stiamo raccontando, eh, eh, Alessandro, in una pubblicazione che uscirà a breve, speriamo a gennaio, bilingue, sia in italiano che in inglese, sull'avventura delle case neuro. Ci sono otto contributi di docenti universitari italiani, romani, di Milano, quindi che è un po' verte un po' l'aspetto sociale, economico, eh, l'aspetto legale dell'acquisto della casa nero. Questo è un po' il riassunto di questo, di questo incontro di oggi. E, quindi la cosa più bella, eh, ho perso un po' il filo, eh, dove volevo andare a parare. Sostanzialmente la cosa più bella di questa avventura è scegliere un po' sa. E, cioè, chi ha comprato casa a Sambuca poi diventa cittadino attivo, cioè ha portato la, la propria compagnia teatrale al teatro, al recitale, è stata inserita nel cartellone. O ogni estate organizza all'interno del quartiere arabo degli incontri a tema in lingua inglese, in lingua italiana, quindi cercando di mettere, no? di mettere insieme la comunità. Oppure okay. c'è lo svizzero, allora. mm. lo svizzero bye, bye. Finisco, c'è lo svizzero che ha comprato un terreno. Oh, allora, e ha fatto un, un orto botanico che fa visitare a tutti, a tutti i turisti, a tutti, quindi cioè, vuoi dire, tu diventi cittadino di San Buca, perché vivi okay. con i cittadini, non solo con le case, ma tra... <laughs> Let me translate, let me translate this for the audience. So, uh, what Giuseppe says is about, similar to the concept that Maurizio uh, was uh, coming up with uh, lately. So, basically, the people that are buying in San Buca, they look for, more than a house they, do, they don't just look to buy like four walls to live in they look for a place to be they look for a community to be part of and uh, a few anecdotes that giuseppe provided uh, to me right now are for example like um uh, english-speaking uh, actress who came into sambuca 
and she made um, a show at the theater in English and Italian. So this like uh, bridge connecting cultures is happening in these small communities uh, in Italy, which are like, uh, because of their geography and the morphology of the area, makes it easier for you to be part of something uh, close, like a community, because the, these, these villages have maybe 5,000, 6,000 people, so everybody knows each other. And for many people coming from huge metropolitan uh, uh, cities, like it's important to have the, the chance in their life to experience also this kind of uh, feeling, like to be part of something and to connect with the, uh, with the local. And so this is very, something very important when you decide to buy a one euro home, is that you have to look at it as if you are going to be a member of a community and get to know other people in a very condensed area. So, Meredith, I'm going to come to you last. Uh -huh. Nicolo, how about you? What, what piece, one piece of advice would you have for people? Well, very simple and very quickly, um, you need to have a strategy. And a strategy comes in with what is your immigration op your options, what about the property you want to purchase, and what about if you decide to move to Italy and take care of your taxes. It's very important to approach all of these areas together and to get the right advice if you can't do it solo. Great, thank you. Um, Mauricio? Amy. Amy. Mauricio and Pietro. <laughs> Consiglio, Maurizio. Un ultimo consiglio più importante che tu vorresti dare. Beh, condivido quello che ha detto Nicolò. Bisogna avere una strategia. Bisogna studiare prima di, di avventurarsi nell'acquisto di una casa in un'area rurale. Bisogna capire che cosa si vuole e come l'Italia può risponderti. Quale zona, quale città. E comunque venire anche con grande disponibilità, con la mente aperta, senza criteri stringenti. Le case sono da ristrutturare, perciò si possono in qualche modo disegnare, almeno nella parte interna, per come si desidera. Scusa Pietro, sono andato troppo lungo forse. Thank you. Um, so yes, um, he, um, yes, again, strategy. You need to have a strategy uh, before uh, approaching uh, this um, uh, adventure, this, this project. Um, it's good if you are able to come to Italy, to join, uh, to visit, uh, to meet people, um, to share uh, time. Um, and of course, all these properties are uh, uh, properties to be renovated. Uh, therefore, at least in the interior part of the, of the properties, you can then um, do works uh, in order to change, uh, to, to do real renovation works. So uh, basically, is a strategy and an idea of what you would like to do. Okay, thank you. And then Pietro, your closing comment in your own right. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, well, I'm a lawyer, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, I... Uh, hey, why you unfortunately? Know, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, uh, you know from, from a legal point of view, it is always, always very important for those who are coming to Italy um, to uh, cover all the aspects uh, uh, in a legal way because uh, you may purchase a property uh, you may uh, sign a, a, a deed and become owner of the property, and then at a later stage, uh, the competent offices uh, may come to you and say, this is not legal, these works have not carried out uh, uh, legally, so you would have to do further works, you would have to uh, face fines, etc. Um, so it is important to have someone who is able to... Um, to advise you, some professionals, uh, for, for, for all the aspects, which is mainly immigration, purchase of property, and taxes. Okay. Valeria, your turn. Um, so I agree uh, with more or less with what they say, but my advice is really, if you have the opportunity to come here, because um, how Giuseppe say, it's not just buying a house, it's more like leaving, um, life in the small town that is something completely different of living in a big town so you really have the contact with the with the people living here with the different style of life that you have in this town so have this experience it will help to to understand exactly 
um, what you are going through, just find a house. And remind me where you're based, Valeria, which city you're in? Musumeli, in Sicily. In Sicily, oh, up in Sicily. Okay, Mary Death, you're the star of this show, I think. Um, so, so let's have your sort of departing advice on this. Um, I, you know, I guess so many people that reach out to me saying that it's their dream to do the same thing. Um, they're from all over the world, not just from the U.S., not just um, people that have, you know, families from, um, it, or family members from Italy. Um, so my number one piece of advice would just be to follow your dream if this is something that you're really passionate about and that you really think you want to do. Um, don't let all of the details, you know, make you feel overwhelmed and keep you from taking those first steps and um, getting information. Um, and, you, and, you know, don't think too far ahead. It's good to have a plan, but not think so far ahead that you end up not doing anything because it makes you feel overwhelmed. Um, and the other thing I would say is absolutely have a plan, have a budget, have a plan, start putting those pieces in place so that you can go into it prepared um, and, you know, and have the, the tools that you need to overcome the challenges because, you know, there are going to be a lot of challenges over the way and you just have to expect that that's going to happen. Um, even in the best of, of circumstances, which I believe I am in, there have been a lot of hurdles to overcome. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's kind of become um, something that I enjoy now. Uh, we, we get a lot of entertainment out of the things that come up that are uh, unanticipated. Um, so, you know, that's the biggest thing is if this is something that you really want to do, know that there are tons of resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, those of you who are interested, I have an Instagram, um, you know, I have an Instagram page. I am putting all of the details of my renovation on there so everyone can follow along. I also just have a lot of information on there about the, the, the one year old scheme in general. So um, I also have a ton of people reach out to me with questions, happy to answer those. Um, so, you know, use people who are willing to help you uh, as a resource. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. And if anyone has any more questions, you know, the panelists are available or please reach out to us and we'll make the right connection. Um, thank you for your time and hope to see you again on another adventure of exploring immigration to Italy. Bye-bye.